NVIDIA CPUs. Yes, that's right. I said CPUs. Microsoft shaking things up, buying all the things for $69 billion and AMD and Samsung stop being cowards and reveal the eclipse. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the Internet while you enjoy your breakfast, especially that one guy yesterday who commented. He was like, hey, I'm having lunch. I guess if you want to call that breakfast, that's what I do. You're having breakfast because you're watching hot news. So let's jumpity jump on into talking about all of the tech things that are happening, including the fact that NVIDIA is really moving forward on developing a new CPU engineering and design team over at their Israel office. They're adding on to the 2,800 people who are already part of their Israel team, which they got when they acquired Mellanox all the way back in 2020. And it looks like they're going to start working towards coming out with a CPU. Now, likely this will be an ARM-based a CPU, potentially the gray CPU that's expected, but it could potentially lead to other things that happen down the line, including giving us a third party competitor to the general consumer. Obviously, Apple did it in producing their M1 chips. Who's to say that Nvidia couldn't produce their own SOCs that would come out that would make it so that you get the best gaming handheld stuff. The only caveat and difficulty I would see with all of that is potentially just getting operating system support with Microsoft. But if they end up doing this, even if their acquisition of ARM doesn't go through, but they come out with a team green CPU, we could really have a battle of RGB going on in our hands. Intel and AMD already producing both CPUs and GPUs that go to the end consumer. Hopefully Nvidia ends up in this game. Honestly, competition is probably better for everybody and seeing more mainstream players hit this. I'm very excited for it. Just like I was very excited when Apple came out with their M1 chips. I'd like to see where this is going. So NVIDIA hiring people, trying to get that done. Obviously, this is very preliminary stages on the rumors, just like back in 2018 when I talked about the fact that Apple was looking to replace Intel for their MacBooks, and it took up until 2020 for them to do that, but we could potentially be seeing something moving here, even if it's only in server, maybe it won't ever make it to the end consumer, but exciting times indeed. Well, you know what else is exciting? When Intel learns a lesson, they look at what AMD is doing, and instead of being all hoity toy being like, oh, you're never going to be in our windshield again. We're going to see you in the rear view mirror, bud. But instead, they're like, hey, AMD doing the right thing with that cash thing that they're doing. And Brett not doing the right thing with this accent he got going on. So I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm going to talk about how Raptor Lake is supposed to have massive cache size increases to the tune of what we're seeing with AMD's chips, especially on the L3 cache, which AMD has dubbed their game cache, and it makes it so that their processors perform better for gaming. Game cache, the words. They just work together. And there's reports coming out that Intel's Raptor Lake would have a lot more megabytes of cache on the L2 as well as the L3 to make these things faster. So Nvidia getting into the game, Intel learning some lessons, and I'm gonna learn you some crypto stonks right now. Bitcoin continuing its downslide. Just hasn't had a green day in a couple of days. Looking at 0.68% decrease to be at 41.821. Ethereum also down 2.4% to sit at 30. 31.24 and Dogecoin down 4.3% to sit at 16.4 cents. The meme stonks also having a slide. GameStop down 6.7%. AMC down 8.5%. I saw in like my trending Twitter topics, it was just like AMC squeeze. And it was like how investors are trying to get a squeeze to happen on AMC. And I was just like, really? Is it happening again? And then I went to go check the stock and it was like right here when it was down 11%. And I was just like, Oh. Oh, it's just people talking crap on Twitter. Nothing's actually happening besides numbers go down bad, except for Microsoft's numbers. They go to the moon. All right. Sixty eight point seven billion dollars. We're going to round that bad boy up just to keep it nice in here. Sixty nine billion dollars. Microsoft is acquiring Activision Blizzard for the loved games such as Doblo, Overwatch, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush because they own King as well as Starcraft. Microsoft now acquiring a whole bunch of games that will give them a huge game game library. Obviously, this is by far eclipsing the Bethesda deal that they had for seven and a half billion dollars. And this now gives Microsoft the rights to Crash Bandicoot. Just, how is this happening? I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways, Microsoft expecting that this deal will likely close sometime in their fiscal 2023. They're not expecting that this is going to get blocked by antitrust legislation that is going out there, but they are expecting that this is going to take some time to work out in the courts because 
This is obviously a massive acquisition by Microsoft to add this to their Game Pass stuff that's going on there. And obviously Blizzard and Activision has come under fire as of late, especially for their sexual harassment stuff that's been going on behind the scenes. And a lot of people are wondering whether or not Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick is going to stay. Kotick? Kotick? I don't know. Whether or not he's going to stay on as CEO, according to the new restructure, everybody's going to re be reporting to Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox. And according to some rumors out there, Mr. Bobby's going to be leaving Blizzard as soon as the acquisition is complete. But obviously, massive deal happening in the gaming industry. I, there's a lot of speculation out there as to whether or not Microsoft is going to make things like Call of Duty uh, just a Microsoft Xbox exclusive to the PC and to their series consoles. And given what they've done with Bethesda, I say that it's probably very likely that they're going to do it. They just think that the lost revenue from all of the Sony purchases that would have happened is just like an investment in Game Pass. It's like, oh, OK, we're losing this sales. That's the cost of us putting these games exclusively on Microsoft's platforms. And that's likely what's going to happen, at least in my estimation. But Microsoft also confirming that Xbox Game Pass is succeeding. It has 25 million subscribers as of right now, which is up from the 18 million that it had in the previous year, which is a 39% increase. Xbox Game Pass honestly just makes a ton of sense in my estimation. I have it for PC. PC Game Pass just makes so much sense. You're essentially paying for two to three games a year, but you get access to the unlimited library of everything that they're going to have to offer. And especially as they continue to acquire all of these studios, it just means that, hey, I'll get them day one and I don't have to buy it for 60 bucks. Microsoft making some shaking bacon moves. And you know who else is shaking bacon? All right, you're going to want this and you your computer, NVIDIA has got something good for you. The GT 1010, my friends. So yes, yes, NVIDIA hasn't talked about this at all, all right? But I'm here to bring it to you, okay? GT 1010 benchmarks showing up, okay? Just, just hold your horses, settle down, all right? It's coming in a CUDA benchmark from Geekbench. Look at those scores, all right? 7730, which compared to the RTX 3070, is 95% worse, but this is the GT 1010 we're talking about, consuming under 35 watts. Gonna be an itty little bitty boy that you're gonna put in your home theater PC or your office PC because your parents won't actually buy you a GPU and you can't upgrade the power supply because you just don't have any money, so you're gonna just buy this GPU because you see it on the shelf at freaking Best Buy and you're gonna be like, oh, I hope this fits, and then it doesn't because you realize you have an AGP slot where you just got a PCI Express graphics card, and I'm not reliving my trauma from the mid to late 2000s, okay? That's not happening right now. I'm talking about, you know, small end GPUs that you think are gonna work. That's, let's move Move on to talking about other small end GPUs and Samsung, AMD, we got it. The Exynos 2200, they're talking about it a week late. Not really confirming anything of why the speculation of why they just didn't talk about it on the release date when they made a whole promotional video, created their own website, did their own social media push. That just Let's just ignore that and talk about how the fact that it's got the AMD E Xclipse, not Eclipse, my bad, Xclipse GPU that's based on Samsung's four nanometer EUV process. And it's the first result of a multi-plan generation of AMD RDNA graphics in Exynos SOCs. The CPU also gonna be in there. It's not something revolutionary, but the Xclipse is a huge big deal, okay? And we're expecting that we're gonna get it sometime soon. They, th There's not a whole lot of confirmation going around here based on what I read about like AIM, Samsung really talking about this they there's not a whole lot of definitive aspects of what's going on here whether or not there are thermal throttling issues whether or not this is going to make it into the galaxy s22 we just kind of have to wait until february 8th at which point likely the exynos 2200 will not be in those phones so we just have to wait and see but i mean it kind of something that has been hyped up for years to just miss huge launch and then be silently kind of talked about a week later not not getting my jimmies hyped up i'll tell you that much but i'm gonna stop hyping your jimmies i'm just gonna leave them now because this episode of hot news is over i'm so sorry i gave you the image of me hyping your jimmies i'll see you tomorrow